Olive Drop Service Uniform, one of the most iconic uniforms of women personnel of the US Army in World War II. Introduced in 1943, this uniform was issued to all Army nurses, physical therapy aides, hospital dietitians, and officers of the Women's Army Corps serving in the continental United States and overseas. The Olive Drop Service Uniform was available in two versions, winter and summer. This ensured that the uniform was suitable for wearing in different climate zones and at different times of the year. The service uniform, winter or summer, was the prescribed uniform for wear on all occasions other than for hospital duty or where cold climate clothing was authorized or for exercise. The complete uniform consisted of a service jacket in dark olive drop shade, skirt, headwear, a service cap or a garrison cap, khaki waist, khaki necktie, a pair of service shoes, and a neutral shade hosiery. In this video, we'll take a look at how the olive drop service uniform was worn, beginning with the underwear and moving on to accessories and outer garments. We'll also briefly explain the rules on hairstyles, makeup, and jewelry that were authorized by the army to be worn with this type of uniform in the 1940s. An army nurse begins her day with a morning toilet and laying out her underwear. The lingerie worn by women in the 1940s was different from today's. It typically consisted of a bra, panties, a garter belt, seamed stockings and a full slip. All these garments allowed to achieve the silhouette popular in the 1940s. The shape that the 1940s bras created was much pointier than today. Unlike modern bras designed to lift and round, vintage bras separated and pointed the breasts slightly outward. The straps would come from the middle of the cups instead of the sides. 1940s panties weren't close fitting or small. They reached up past the belly button and looked like shorts. For the purposes of this video, however, we are using combinations, all-in-one underwears which combine slip and panties into one garment. Stockings were worn by army nurses when in uniform. They were nude colored with a matching beige seam up the back. They were held up with garters and made of silk, rayon or cotton. In the 1940s, it wasn't considered appropriate to be bare-legged in public. Identification tags were worn by all army nurses at all times. The name, serial number, tetanus immunization date, blood type, next of kin details, and religion of a service woman were stamped on the tags. These ID tags were part of the uniform and could be removed only temporarily as the necessities of personal hygiene might have required. Optionally, women could also wear identification bracelets with their name and serial number engraved on them. Any ornamental items popular in civilian life were not allowed to be worn in uniform. A women's khaki waist was worn in combination with the olive drop service uniform. Please note that the shirt does not have shoulder loops, even though it is worn by officer personnel. The insignia on the collar of the waist was only worn when the jacket was removed. A six-gore skirt with a waistband and side opening with zipper and button closure was another element of the olive drop service uniform. Its length should reach past the knee. The shirt was always worn tucked into the skirt. It's time to do the hair. Women in the armed services had rules to follow when it comes to hairstyles. 
hair had to be off the collar while on duty. A cap or helmet was part of the uniform and the hair had to be appropriately styled. Shorter hairstyles were preferred. Women's hair was always set using pink curls, rollers or by twisting it up in rags. It could be left overnight in pink curls under a scarf. Straight hair, popular today, was not fashionable during the 1940s. Bobby pins and hair combs were used to keep rolls in place. Hairnets were used to keep the back of the hair neat. They were made of human hair or nylon and came in different hair colors. Especially in bad or humid weather, they could really save the look. 1940s makeup enhanced natural beauty. In the United States, cosmetics continued to be manufactured throughout the war. Women serving overseas received cosmetics in packages from home or could buy them at the local post exchange, or PX. Very little makeup was used on the eyes. During the day, most women wore a light coating of dark brown or black mascara. It was mainly applied to the upper lashes. Loose and pressed powders were available to set the foundation and eliminate unwanted shine. Army nurses were encouraged to wear makeup to boost their own morale and that of the wounded soldiers they cared for. The lips were the most important part of the 1940s phase. Lipsticks were available in different shades of red with blue, brown, orange and pink undertones. Red lipstick became a symbol of courage, strength and victory. Cosmetics companies launched products with patriotic names such as Victory Red, On Duty, Montezuma Red and many more. Celebrities advertising cosmetics began to be slowly replaced by images of ordinary American women and, most importantly, members of the United States Army. A khaki necktie complemented the olive drab service uniform. It was made of a blend of cotton and mohair, making it durable and resistant to wrinkles and wear. Women's ties were similar in appearance to those worn by men, but shorter. When the shirt was worn without the jacket, but with the necktie, the necktie would be tucked into the waist between the second and third buttons. A single-breasted service jacket was well-fitted through the chest and shoulders and semi-fitted through the waistline to conform to the lines of the figure. It was closed with four large regulation coat buttons, equally spaced. Insignia of grade, second lieutenant or higher, were worn on shoulder loops of the jacket. A pair of cutout US insignia were pinned to the collar and distinctive Army Nurse Corps insignia to the labels. The regulations called for the patch of the nurse's current Army of Assignment to be worn on the left sleeve approximately half inch down from the shoulder seam. During World War II, the women serving in the Army Nurse Corps were issued only one type of footwear for the olive drab service uniform. These were brown leather oxfords with a heel measuring one and a half inch high. The shoes had a leather sole, a rubberized heel and were tied with 27 inches long brown laces. The service cap was the basic headwear of the olive drab service uniform. From 1943 to mid 1944, it was the only official headwear approved for this uniform until nurses were allowed to wear garrison caps in July of 1944. The service cap was worn centered squarely on the head in order to give proper fit and appearance. Women personnel of the army would not appear outdoors in uniform without the proper headgear authorized for wear with the type of uniform being worn. Army nurses were authorized to wear olive drab slacks of commercial design with both the olive drab winter and summer uniforms under such conditions as the commanding officer may deem appropriate. Uniform rules were adapted by officers to the climate and terrain of their assigned zone of combat. Slacks had pleats and darts at the waistline to provide proper fit. 
a 2-inch belt with adjustable button closure and slash pockets. Nurses could wear brown leather gloves or olive trap wool gloves with their olive trap service uniform. Women's dress leather gloves were simple pull-on gloves without any decorative elements. With the introduction of the olive drop service uniform in 1943, nurses also received a coat to wear on cold and rainy days. It was a double-breasted trench coat made of windproof and waterproof cotton poplin. The coat had a detachable hood and a warm wool lining. Officer's version of this coat used by nurses had shoulder loops to which the military grades were pinned. In November 1944, women were additionally given the option of purchasing a wool coat at their own expense. The wool overcoat of Elastic or Baratheia in shade number 51 was authorized for all women officers. It was made of high quality fabric. The wool overcoat of Beaver, Doeskin, Kersey, Melton or Whipcord in shade number 52 was authorized for nurses, physical therapists and dietitians only. It was buttoned down the front with a double row of large regulation overcoat buttons, three on each side. The wool coats were quite heavy but very warm. The olive drop service uniform is one of the most recognizable among US Army women's uniforms. It was worn by nurses serving in all corners of the world from 1943 until the end of the war. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions regarding this uniform, please write them in the comment section below. We plan to make similar videos about other Army Nurse Corps uniforms in the future. If you don't want to miss them, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. See you next time!